Thanks for tuning in to Black Twitter Talk, where we celebrate and discuss innovation and progression in music, art, culture, and politics through the lens of Black Twitter. I am your host, Angie Skates, and you can find me on Twitter at Angie underscore Skates. What's up, guys? I'm Kelly. You can find me on Twitter at The Urban Gypsy LA. And to join the conversation, make sure you hashtag Black Twitter Talk, hashtag BTT, or at us. Um, and today, we're Black Twitter talking Melania Trump, Ted Cruz at the RNC 2016. Um, we're talking Kim K, Kanye, and Tay Tay. Tay Tay. <laughs> and racial discrimination um, and Airbnb yes. and much, much more. So let's get into it. Melania Trump, 2016 RNC. What'd she do, y'all? She plagiarized Floatis, Michelle Obama, okay? Don't, don't mess with, don't mess with my Michelle. girl Michelle. Floatis, she's off limits, okay, first and foremost. Um, so I'm caping for her today. Melania, no. I'm like, no. Absolutely not. I, I Honestly, just, it seemed like a joke. It's a huge joke. Like, that's the only response. That's the only appropriate response to plagiarizing a speech like that. Um, and I believe that Michelle did it in 2008 at the Democratic National Convention. And she took whole paragraphs from her speech and said that she wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter laughed. Twitter thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. um, it came up with the hashtag famous Melania Trump quotes where they fashion different literature, um, literary writers, uh, rappers, uh, poets, filmmakers, and they use famous quotes throughout black culture and, and, and gave them credit to Melania. Yeah, um, Jesse Williams put a few of them. It was, I rock rough and stuff with my Afro oh, puffs. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I have a dream. Hey, Melania. <laughs> I freed a thousand slaves. I could have freed a thousand more if only they knew they were slaves. So this isn't the first time that she's ripped off black women, apparently, because I was Harriet Tubman. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Um, but the it's funny story, Jared Hill, who is um, an unemployed television journalist, um, from Culver City, or he oh. lives in Culver City, actually uncovered the whole scandal that the speech was plagiarized. And I think it's interesting that he took to social media and then this whole thing blew up. And it became the biggest byline, the biggest story mm -hmm. from the Republican National Convention, which is quite sorry if you ask me. It is, and I just feel that they're running that whole campaign as if it's a reality TV show. It really is a joke. And I, <laughs> ha, ha, ha. It's not funny. It's a circus. And I am embarrassed that the presidential campaign has been run the way that it's been run. And the candidates, ugh. They leave so much to be desired. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you saw this, but Float is. She never really responded because I was checking on Snapchat and Twitter. Um, but the only thing that did come up was that she did car karaoke with James oh. Carden <laughs> and Missy Elliott. And one of the lines in the song was, copy written, so don't, don't copy, copy me. me. <laughs> and I, was, I love I, that she really knew the words, though, at least to the first verse. Yeah, she was like, really getting it. She getting it. <laughs> Um, I really enjoyed that, but that is the only response that you can have to such a waste of time. Yeah, I mean, like we were talking about earlier, it's really hard to follow up the Obamas. So I don't think any candidate we would have really been like, oh, yes, like how we were for Obama, but they just don't. You don't mm -hmm. do it for me. Like, I usually don't give Trump this much energy, but like we said, she came for Flotus, so we had to put her in her place. Yeah. Um, Steve King, who serves as um, in the House of Representatives um, for Iowa, mm -hmm. he did a public cable interview with Chris Hayes where he said that there is no other group of people, assuming he meant white people, which cause he did, that attributed to civilization. Um, there's no, no larger contribution to civilization than what white people have done. Um, <laughs> boy, bye. <laughs> boy, bye. But I think this is an appropriate example of the way that white people have contributed to um, civilization. Melania Trump is a great example of that mm -hmm. um, by plucking and taking uh, things from our culture that, you know, they, they find interesting or that they, you know, I don't know. And then they take credit for it. Right. I just feel like this is a whole level, another level. This is not appropriation. It's just straight up mockery. Jack move. <laughs> 
It is my creed. But you didn't even do it right, though. Yeah. And then how they say um, imitation is the best form of flattery. flattery. But mm-hmm. only if you if you admit to it. Like, mm-hmm. other than that, it's just, it's a joke. Anyway, speaking of speeches, Jesse Williams mm-hmm. um, recently delivered a speech at the 2016 BET Awards that he received a lot of backlash for. Um, and I want to read a passage from this speech because it, 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 Twitter blew up, it exploded. Um, they really loved it. And even though he received a lot of black backlash for it, a few weeks later, there were things happening in the community with the, the death of Alton Sterling, the murder mm-hmm. of Alton Sterling and Philando Castile that made this speech that much more relevant. Um, and then also Melania Trump ripping off Michelle Obama. It just makes it so much, it gives it so much power. So I'm going to read a, a, an excerpt from it. Um, we've been floating this country on credit for centuries, yo. <laughs> and we're done watching and waiting while this invention called whiteness uses and abuses us, burying black people out of sight and out of mind while extracting our culture, our dollars, our entertainment like oil, black gold, ghettoizing and demeaning our creations, then stealing them, gentrifying our genius and then trying us on like costumes before discarding our bodies like rinds of strange fruit. The thing is though, the thing is that just because we're magic doesn't mean that we're not real. Ooh, and I still got I'm getting I still hot. Get chills. Like seriously. And it's so interesting because he did receive so much backlash on that. I mean, a lot of people did love it, but the type of backlash that he received and was I don't remember that girl's name because she's irrelevant to me, but the um white Tony journalist. Don't yeah, like <laughs> she um she had all that stuff to say as if it was about her, but again, it has nothing to do with you. Like, you guys keep inserting yourself into our stories, instilling our stories, and when we say something about it, we're racist. Like, what? No, you just stole my homework and turned, you erased my name and put your name on it. That's wrong. <laughs> and, like, we, I feel like as a double minority black aunt, women aunt in this country, unfortunately, <laughs> We have to work twice as hard. Mm -hmm. Like, our parents instill that into us from a very young age. And and we have to work twice as hard to be on the same playing field a lot of the times. And even then, the playing field is not level. Mm -hmm. So, it's just extremely relevant. Yeah. 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 Um, And, you know, the news cycle is so short, but... Um, we, we were on vacation when a lot of the things um, had happened, and um, I just want to say that Alton Sterling Philand was mentioned actually by Ted Cruz mm-hmm. um, at the Republican National Convention, and he was talking about different fights for freedom and how that manifested in um, throughout American history over time, and one of the th- he said actually, so did the family of Alton Sterling who bravely called to the end of violence. I think it's interesting that he didn't highlight police violence. Instead, he applauds Sterling's family for condemning the deaths of the Pat- the Baton Rouge police mm-hmm. officers, which we also, like, murder is murder, it's wrong. Um, but he didn't use that as an opportunity to speak up on that, and it's important. It's a major issue in America right now, not just in one particular place, all over America, and I think it's so interesting that the candidates are having a hard time addressing it straight on. And, I mean, we even get frustrated because we don't feel that Obama addresses it straight on. And we we need these issues addressed. And I think that um, that's why Bernie Sanders stayed in the race so long because he was pressing Hillary. Like, no, you need to address these issues. And so I did check. She has had some new policies that she's looking to initiate if, hopefully, she's um, becomes president, addressing the criminal justice system. And... I mean, it's not something that's going to be fixed overnight. And if, if, we, if we can't even talk about it openly in mainstream media and be truthful about it, how are we ever going to fully make improvements? Because it's not going to be fixed overnight. One this is the whole system. It is the whole system. It's ingrained into the fabric of American culture. It's ingrained into our our institutions economically, educationally. It It's something that used to brew under the surface but ever since obama took the white house in 2008 everything just seems to be extremely heightened and and really overt that plus um technology and the fact that we can share so quickly you can't hide it charles kinsey he is um a man that was shot 
by the mm-hmm. police recently. He was, he's a therapist and he was working with one of his autistic students at the time. The man was laid on his back with his hands up. Okay, clearly unarmed, and the officer shot him. Okay, so Charles Ken- Kinsey is still alive. When he asked the officer, why did you shoot me? His response was, I don't know. That sums up the racial... Uh, I don't, it's, it's like just... a gap. Like, they just, they don't even understand why they treat us the way that they do because it's been ingrained in them it's they've been brainwashed to think that you know black is bad we get taught black is dirty black like that is something that you learn from being a little kid don't touch that it's dirty and that's how we become perceived yeah and if we gotta change it yeah we're changing it um we are i think we are we're, we're taking control of the narrative and um we are saying, no, Melania, mm-hmm. you didn't write that. We're saying, no, Philando and Orlando, uh, I'm sorry, Alton Sterling, um, your your debts were not unnoticed. They mm-hmm. were not justified. And we will not allow you to shape the narrative around that. Um, we're taking control of it. Um, another story that I recently read, it's the one-year anniversary on Twitter. Uh, Black Twitter gives me all the news updates. <laughs> um uh, Sandra Bland, one mm-hmm. year anniversary for her death. Um, she it seemed like it was just yesterday. Yesterday, I, and so the new development in this is that the family is still pursuing um, an investigation, and it, it came out that during the grand jury testimonies that the jailers falsified reports, mm-hmm. um, saying that they checked on her when they didn't. And I know that the arresting officer he was fired. Um, or suspended or whatever, and um, he is was indicted for obstruction of just justice for lying to the grand jury, but nobody is taking responsibility for her murder. Mm-hmm. Which a, a whole year later, there's no one indicted. There's no one that is taking responsibility for this young woman's murder. Um, and I'm gonna say her name one more time, Sandra Bland. Sandra Bland. I'm also gonna say Diamond Reynolds and her four year old mm-hmm. daughter who witnessed the murder of their her lover or her her child's father and it broke big but now it's 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 real quiet out there about that and um even what you just said like we are making moves like with the black lives matter after alton sterling you know everybody is like well what can we do what can we do like we're tired of talking about it we want to mobilize we want to get together and i know if for la we do have a black lives matter chapter in la there's plenty in other cities if you aren't aware yet make sure you look it up and see if they have a chapter in your city um it's not just a hashtag it's a real movement it's real organization there are real thinkers and planners behind this movement to make progress um and they recently had their weekly meeting on Sunday and it, so many people came out that they had to move the meeting to Centinella Park, Park. and it was I wish I was supposed to be there but yeah, we were in out of the it country was, yeah so it was so many people there it looks so powerful like I, I feel like I missed out on a moment um if you were there please hashtag talk to us let us know what your thought was and what your experience was I did read a lot of you guys' thoughts on Twitter and then after that they took it to um the 405 and outside on the streets and they like formed a peace sign and some people were saying like oh you need to go into the bad na- the good neighborhoods and mess up their stuff why are you blocking our streets out here but it didn't transpire as oh let's go ride in Inglewood they said the energy was just so good that they had to go take it out yeah. and spread that love yeah it's good just to lighten the mood up a little bit <laughs> Kim K, Kanye, and Tay Tay. Yeah, I can't stand it. Okay. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> because, okay, that story broke, but I went on there to find out about the guy who was laying, laying on his back with his hands. No, I went on there to find out about... Melania? I don't... It was so many things going on that I was missing out on, and I wanted to find out about it. And I go on, and I'm all I see is Kim, Taylor, Kanye, and I'm like... Okay, first of all. Black Twitter, where you at? Black Twitter, we can multitask. We can talk about Black Lives Matter. We can talk (laughs) about diversity in Hollywood. We can talk about Kim K, Kanye, and Tay Tay. Like, hmm, you see what I did there? 
multitasking. Yeah, it doesn't make anything less important. No. But at the time, I was looking for the tea on that, and I did. But on one hand, I was kind of happy because I was tired of reading so many negative things that it was a it, good it relief. The yeah. Mood. And so did the, the hashtag Melania Trump famous quote. Right. It lightened the mood. But anyway, so Kim K <laughs> <laughs> exposes Taylor Swift for being a liar um, in regards to Kanye West's mm-hmm. famous video. Her camp put out a statement saying that she was not aware um, of the song or, you know, and she did not condone it. It was so mis- misogynistic, this, that, and the other, blah, 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 blah. So Kim K releases a Snapchat um, of a, a very cordial phone call <laughs> between. Uh, between Kanye and Taylor. And I was I was surprised. Like, okay, wait a minute. Kanye might not be crazy. You're this right. might just be another example of white privilege working here. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? I just think she is like, you know what? Uh, any publicity is good publicity. So, yeah, I'm going to tell you Kanye is cool. But when it come out... Um, I'm gonna pretend like it didn't happen yeah. because you what? know it's not gonna hurt me. You use my name, and now I'm in the conversation, and I'm gonna just make you look bad. I made that famous. Is is that the song? I don't know. Yeah, anyway. it is a song. He calls her the B word, and they discussed it, and she said she had no idea. So her story changed after this video comes out, and she says that um she was supposed to hear the song before mm-hmm. it was released, and she never heard the song, so that's why she still didn't sign off on it. But whatever, Taylor Swift, your word is not bond. It's provocative. It's, ooh, it gets the people mm. going, Taylor. Yeah. You know that. <laughs> yeah. Stop playing. Yeah. Why are you playing with us? She's a mark. Um, anyway. A lot of people have been saying, like, she's a faulty person, and this is finally caught on tape. Somebody tweeted, like, y'all better watch out. Kim out here learning how to cook soul food, and she, like, looking out for her man. I don't know the exact tweet, but I thought it was funny. (laughs) It was. Yeah, okay. Um, So can we talk about Leslie Jones? Uh, Tell me me what happened with that. Like, I know there was some issue with her finding a designer for her. Her red carpet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Leslie Jones is an actress who um, is one of the leads in the new film Ghostbusters. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, apparently she was the target of a lot of racist, misogynist tweets, and, um, she was retweeting all of the things that she was being tweeted, and Twitter did nothing about the harassment, which I find is very common, especially among very outspoken black feminists on Twitter. We're constantly being trolled and harassed, and it gets ugly. Really hurtful, like, Mm -hmm. it gets really nasty, and, um... I, even myself, I've been harassed on Twitter, and you send the notification. Go ahead. You send go the ahead, notification. Girl. You tell them what's going on. I done screenshot everything. Giving detail, and nothing and happened. They, nothing. Sometimes they don't respond, or by the time that they responded, whoever was trolling, they're not even on there no more, or they got a new name. So and they're like, oh, we yeah. don't have no evidence. Sorry. No, Obviously, yeah. it's personal. It's very personal, <laughs> and that's why we're talking about it. But the CEO of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, reaches out to Leslie, and one of the main culprits of this whole thing um, is suspended mm-hmm. indefinitely from Twitter, which Good. Azalea Banks was permanently suspended from Twitter for a racist rant. But it was no, no, it was so easy for them to do that for her. And there's other people on Twitter who, who, you know, use the ruse, the ruse of, of free speech, mm-hmm. which is really, it's not what it is. It's hate speech. It you're, is. You're it racist is and difference. misogynist, and there's a big difference in that. I think what's going on is that Twitter has put in new rules as far as harassing and bullying, which and they're taking it more serious, which is good which because even though it's not in person, words do hurt. They do, you know, and it goes too far. Yeah, it does, especially on Twitter. Um, I wanted. Have you seen the the movie though, Ghostbusters? I haven't seen it. I'm not okay. So let I used to love Ghostbusters, but for some reason, I don't the way that they're marketing it. I haven't been that interested. Interested, and I'm going to share what what my thing is about this new Ghostbusters movie is the lack of diversity in Hollywood. Okay, Um, obviously Leslie Jones is a beautiful black woman, um, dark skin, um, strong features, strong features, curvy. We we love all of that. Mm -hmm. We want to see more of that. Hello. (laughs) <laughs> um, but it's not just about casting talent in front of the camera. Um, she plays along three other women who, great woman power, wonderful. But they're all scientists in the film, and mm-hmm. she's a bus driver. Cricket. <laughs> I was thinking that first. I'm like, well, I don't know. Even if, 
I feel like it's three other white women. One of the white women could have been a bus driver, if so we can like even to it out. That to tell the or, story. But I was thinking if they were to even cast a white woman as a bus driver, she would have probably been fat. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I feel like you floppy. can't be a beautiful oh. woman and drive a bus, and that's so unreal because I've seen some real fit, uh, strong arms driving them bus. I know a couple, <laughs> um, and that just goes to show that diversity is not just about casting uh, people talent. of color, mm-hmm. women, talent in front of the screen. It's about hiring people of color in the writers' room, directors, mm-hmm. producers. So that, you know, it changes the, the, the scope of the narrative and it makes it three-dimensional by having offering all these different perspectives, which is important. Yeah, because when you continue to cast us in roles that are, like, not the same level, that's why we continue to be looked at as if we're subpar. As if we can't be anything more than a bus driver or a ghetto girl smacking her gum and did it like not saying that we are not those things too, but that's not all that we are. And you continue to push those images. It's like, come on now. And we're taking again, we're taking control of that narrative and we're taking, you know, the emphasis off of how we're seeing to what it is that we are seeing. Mm-hmm. Tracy Ellis Ross said something like that um recently um and i think that's important Mm -hmm. and i'm here for that all all day even her not being able to find someone to design her dress it's like i think again they're looking like oh you're a bus driver no actually i'm not an actual bus driver i'm just just playing one one. i'm like really a talented woman and i i'm actually in this really big big movie maybe you heard of it and i'm gonna go see it because i i want to i want to see if it's any good i don't know have a critique on it yeah an honest critique about it um, so as Angie has said, we've been out of town for a while and just from being out and reading a lot about travel, it's a lot of going on as far as black people traveling right now. And while we were gone, I'm like, dang, I don't see that many black people. It was my first international trip, like outside of Mexico. We went to Bali and I, I literally could count on one hand how many black people I saw. I think maybe they just weren't going to Bali where we were going um, because I noticed that there is a trend in black people traveling. Um, Mm -hmm. We're doing it more, especially international travel. We definitely are. And so in being someone who is looking to continue to do that, I did take notice to these stories where black people are booking Airbnbs or attempting to book Airbnbs and they're being discriminated on. Um, There was some people who were in Atlanta and the neighbor of the house that they were renting called Called the the police because they thought that they were robbing the house. Um, Then another case, someone kept trying to book and they kept getting the runaround and they had like a bad feeling. So they had one of their white friends book and And then it went went straight through. So these, these are two separate incidents, but both of them decided to start a company. Um, there's one called NorBnB and one called Influencer where basically it caters to black people. So you don't have to worry about that when you're trying to travel. And there's also the so the site Travel Nor. Like there's a lot more information out there. So if you are looking to travel, I recommend it. I do too. Um, because it's everything. <laughs> it's eye opening to see how other people live. Yeah. Um, and how like I've never felt like such an American until I traveled to a different country. Um, because here I'm black, I'm female, I'm this, I'm that, and the other. Like, like American is just like so far down <laughs> on the list. But like traveling abroad, you're an American. Yeah. Huh. And it made me think about everything going on. A lot of times we're like, oh, well, if Trump gets presidency, I'm moving. Well, people, we... are, people are laughing they internationally are laughing. at us. America, they're laughing at us. Yeah. We're a joke. And they're all, you're saying you're moving, but where are you moving, moving to? Because Bali was beautiful, but I'm not trying to move there. I'm not trying. I, I, I live here. America's home. I, I love my and country. And it's a great place. If we act right, get your act right. Get okay. I think <laughs> one of the things that we need to continue to do um and this airbnb you know alternative is 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 a way to do that is to infiltrate change is to concentrate to re-propagate our black dollars Mm -hmm. there's no surprise that black americans are the number one consumers period in Mm -hmm. this country and if we're able to to organize and our thought and you know the with the black lives matter movement i feel like the next step is to organize our our dollars our business interests Most definitely. and one of the ways that we can do that i recently saw this that there did you know did you know america black twitter that there are 26 black owned banks i actually didn't know that i knew there was one 
I there, literally knew there was one, and I just found that out last year. There's 26. One of them is local, Broadway Federal Bank. There's in L.A., in Inglewood. Um, there's another One United Bank that's, I've heard local. Of, that's local. But there's 26 of them throughout the country. Look into this. Let's look into this. Um, and we'll talk about it next week on our show. That is it for today. Um, like I said, to join the conversation, hashtag Black Twitter Talk, hashtag BTT at us. We'd love to hear from you, hear your thoughts. Um, and we will see you all next, next week. week. Stay Thanks tuned. for tuning in, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Straight to the face, better keep the pace. From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Christian, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions or comments, contact us. Info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio, Instagram it. At King XO Bay. Thanks for tuning in. Y'all can't just run on us, niggas, no. The views expressed here are those of the whole song and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.